Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Seth Gervin. I'm from a company called Compass Informatics, which is a consultancy based in Dublin, in Ireland. And I'm going to be presenting the GeoX project. So uh, with my co-authors, they're not here today, but they're, they're watching remotely. There's uh, uh, Chris from Megsimum and Mark Janssen from Terrestris. So you might recognize the same names from, um, from the Open Layers project as well. So, uh, are there any GeoX users, current users in here at the moment, or previous users of GeoX? Just to get an idea of who knows about it. Okay, so a few people. Um, so yeah, I'll just run. I'll just show you the the project overview. So um, I'll be running through these topics. So to give an introduction to what is GeoX, and then give the, some of the project news. Then going to talk about the the latest release and the new features. Then some of the related projects to, to GeoX, so there's other related libraries that can be used. Then go on to some of the systems in production, so where it's actually being used um, on, on live sites, and, and then finally summarize it. So to describe GeoX, um, it basically allows you to build things that looks like a desktop client through the web. And it combines open layers and the XJS library provided by Sancha. So XJS is a, a kind of big JavaScript framework that's been around for a, for a number of years. And the GeoX library links these, these two together. So if anyone was here before, then, then there's already been kind of a review of open layers. But yeah, you'll see open layers used in, in lots of other projects. And lots of web clients use open layers as a base. And GeoX is the same. So it's an OS Geo project. And it's, it's nice and fast. And it, it's mobile ready. You may know a little less about Censure XJS. So um, it's a very comprehensive framework. It's very big. And its main, main selling point is it that has, has over 100 UI components that are ready built. So if, like lots of developers, you don't like writing your own kind of user interfaces and design, that all comes out of the box. So you can kind of skip that part when you're, you're developing a system. So it's, it's kind of main, main selling point in its, is its grid. So it's a very powerful grid that you can use in, in web applications. So I took this from a, a, previous, a, a previous presentation on GeoX. So XJS in 2009 was, was the hot JavaScript framework. Obviously, there's been quite a few since. Um, but it, it's still going, unlike some of, some of the others you might not hear about. But um, the XJS is still going, so it's, it's fairly stable. It's, it's, um, it's kind of keeping up with the, the web trends and JavaScript trends, like promises and things. But um, there's not that much news about it, especially kind of compared to, to 10 years ago. Uh, so kind of the sweet, sweet spot for XJS applications are when you have kind of large data-centric systems. So often they're, they're intranet-based systems rather than public systems, because they can, they can be quite complicated looking and look more like a desktop application than, than kind of a simple web, web application that, that people are used to now. And kind of there's lots of kind of internal banking systems and things which are powered by the XJS framework. Which, which kind of keep it going and keep it, keep it supported. Just check that that's there. So um, yeah, the XJS library um, is, has got kind of two different ways of licensing. There is a GPL license. So XJS, the underlying framework, has a GPL edition. Uh, but it also has a commercial license. And, and the GeoX licensing follows this. So lots of people have concerns about the licensing for XJS. So there's a, a few FAQs um, that I'll send around like the, that will be in the, in the presentation. But basically, if you use the GPL edition of the XJS library, you have to use GeoX as a GPL. If you buy the XJS license, then you can use um, GeoX under the BSD license, so you have more flexibility. And just to give you an idea of the cost of the commercial licenses, it was around $1,200 for a, for a single user. And then for some reason, for five, five users, it was 1,400 or something. But that, that has no deployment restrictions, so it's kind of based on the number of developers in who are creating the application. So to give a high-level overview of what's in GeoX, um, I've linked to the examples there. But um, there's things like layer trees. There's an overview map. There's feature grid. There's pop-ups. And it also provides kind of the architecture for linking together open layers classes within the XJS framework. So anything you up update in open layers is updated in the equivalent XGS model and vice versa. So this will make a bit more sense later on with, with some of the examples. 
So the, the GeoX version 1 came out in 2009, um, but version 3, which is what I'm talking about today, was first started in 2015. So it's basically a complete rewrite of, of the GeoX uh, version 2, which was preceded it. There's over 20 contributors, and it's around 25,000 lines of code. It's a pure JavaScript library, so there's no server side, or there's no linking into PHP or Python or anything on the server. So it's all just uh, JavaScript classes and, and code. And according to the um, constructive cost model, it's, it took about six years worth of effort. So if you're looking for a JavaScript framework um, and you're kind of trying to write one yourself, then that might give you an idea of, of how long it might take to get to, to this level of uh, components and, and quality. So um, yeah, this is the, the project news. So this is kind of stuff that's happened to GeoX in recently. Um, the last reports, there was one in 2017 in Denver by Mark Janssen. There was one in Bonn as well and, and one in Seoul. So it's mainly been Mark and Chris have been presenting GeoX, so they're having a, having a break this year. And this year, uh, we've also applied for the OSGO community project status. So that's currently being voted on. So it was plus seven votes as of last week. So I um, can probably announce shortly that it's that it'll hopefully um, be an OSGO community project, which obviously gives users and, and people a bit more confidence in, in using the library that, that it's gone through kind of licensing and uh, a few checks, and that's going to be around for the, for the longer term. Uh, so XJS, which obviously underpins GeoX, uh, the company behind it was acquired by another company called Idera, who also acquired kind of the Delphi development, if anyone knows Delphi. They also acquired the, the Travis CI um, this year. So they seem to go around acquiring companies that have tech that still makes money and, and keep it going and support it. Um, we'll see if they pump in lots of money into new development for the library, but there, there has been a new version of XGS released this year, version 7, whereas uh, the one we're using for GeoX3 is, is version 6. And in terms of releases, uh, so version 3.2 was released this, this June. So it's been one and a half years since the previous release. So there's been quite a, quite a lot of commits since then. So I'm just going to highlight some of the, the features in, in the new release. So I'm going to start with a few of the kind of the simpler basic, basic features that have been added and then move on to the kind of more complex examples. So um, the first one here is a geocoder. So this adds in a, an XJS combo box and you can start typing in. You can link it to a, any backend geocoder and then it will zoom your map in to that location. Um, in the example, it's using Nominatum, I think, which is based on OpenStreetMap. So it will zoom, it, zoom into the location and add a, add a bounding box feature. Uh, something that was in a previous version of GeoX that's only just been added in back now is, is the linking between a grid and an item on the map. So basically, you can select something in the grid, and it'll be highlighted on the map. And you can select something on the map, and it'll be highlighted on the grid. So this is kind of where the, the two-way binding comes in. Um, a nice little plugin is a layer tree context menu. So the, one of the key components of GeoX is a layer tree. And now you can right-click on a layer, and you can add in lots of functions related to that layer. So things like redrawing a WMS layer if the data has been updated, or adding in labels. Um, so it just provides a, a nice plugin framework for that. Uh, but the most interesting things are all related to the, to the grid. So as I say, in, in XJS, the grid is kind of the, the big selling point. It's very powerful. It has all sorts of filters, kind of numeric filters, string filters, Boolean filters. And some of the work for the 3.2 release was to link the grid with a WFS backend and use OGC compliant filters. So basically, you can use the XJS grid uh, that creates an OGC filter, it sends it back to a WFS backend, that sends back the data to your grid, and everything's in sync. So um, there's actually one of the developers from Terrestris, Johannes is at the back, um, staying very quiet, who, who developed that feature. So, so hopefully, I don't know if the, if the video will work. Um, so this is it in action. So they're the XJS filters. Um, and then basically you can use any of the filters, you can apply a filter, filter to any of the, the attributes and it'll directly filter the, the data on the map. So it keeps everything nice and in sync and it's all using OGC standards. 
a, similar, a similar thing that we've added to the grid was uh, to allow paging. So WFS2 supports paging of features. So rather than getting 6,000 features all at one time, you can page through and just get 20 records at a time. So again, we, we took the approach of using the kind of standard OGC WFS, inter, WFS interface and allowing you to, to page through features. So if I just show the map, the map here. Once you page through the, the features with the paging toolbar at the bottom, then the, the map's updated as well. So it means that you don't have to download all of the, the features in any, at any one time. So, um, yeah, I'll come on to some of the, the future developments related to the grid. Um, so there's also sorting as well, which, uh, which was added along with the, the paging. So you can sort based on, you can sort using the WFS service and that's, that's applied to the grid as well. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of highlight a few projects that are related to the, to the GeoX ecosystem. So these are libraries that you can use to kind of enhance the, the GeoX library. Uh, something that's been added recently is moving the GX library to, to the node package manager. So this is kind of a step to try and get rid of some of the, the Censure ecosystem and make it GOX kind of more accessible outside of, of XJS and Censure. Uh, so, so now the recommended approach for installing GOX is to use the NPM install. There's also a new demo application that I've been working on that uh, highlights all of the new features of 3.2. So, um, each of the features has its own example on the, the GeoX homepage, but sometimes it's quite hard to, to put them all together into a, a full application. And this, um, this demo application tries to kind of follow a, the structure that people can follow the same approach so that you don't end up with a, a mess of an architecture. Um, and it uses the new XGS approach of the model view view model, which, which ends up being kind of nice and clean. And especially as some of these data, data centric systems are very large, then it's useful to have a good structure so that you can keep them updated and, and don't kind of end up in a big spaghetti mess. So I'm just going to play the video of the, the demo application. So it, this is one of the XJS themes. You can see here it's got the paging, it's got the, the selection, um, and then it's just using the filters as well. And it's got the layer tree on the left. Um, so you can see it, it's all nicely synced um, together. So basically, you can create a grid for any of your WFS services, uh, send it to the grid, and then you can add all these functions in, in a few lines of code using the, the GeoX library. Uh, something else that's happened this year is GeoX got added to the OS Geo Live. Um, so if everyone got their USB keys, then there's a new project, uh, project overview and quick start for GeoX. So you can, you can try that out and just see, um, see how easy or difficult it is to put a, a simple application together. Uh, so it uses a map server backend with um, WMS and WFS layers. So that's all, all set up on the, the new version of OS Geo Live. Um, and the, the quick start should end up with an application that, that looks a little like this. So. Um, OK, so there's a couple of related libraries. There's a, a library called Basics, and this is from Terrestris as well. So this is kind of a higher level library than, than GeoX. So GeoX does a lot of the plumbing between the two frameworks, but the, the basic basics library adds a lot more UI components. So there's things like ready-made forms to add in WMSs from a, a server. There's digitizing tools. Um, so if you look at the, the docs, or you, you, you can have a quick through look through the documentation, you can see that there's, there's kind of a, a couple of hundred classes there. And you can plug those straight into your kind of GeoX XGS application. Um, there's also a related project called GeoStyler, and I think there's a talk going on right now about GeoStyler in one of the, the adjoining rooms by, by Till Adams. So you can search for that talk afterwards. Um, but basically, it allows symbolizing of, of geodata in the browser or, or using uh, JavaScript. And for example, you can, you can apply an SLD file to a WFS layer and a, um, or to a vector layer in open layers and apply the SLD directly. So that's what I'm using it in for one of my projects. So it's, um, it's a useful way of reusing different styles and applying them to, to things in, in open layers. Um, OK, so now I'm just going to go for a, a few of the larger GeoX systems that are in production. As I say, many of these are, are intranet sites, so you won't, won't be finding them on the, on the public internet. 
So uh, the one I'm working on at the moment is a public lighting project in Ireland. So this is to retrofit all the public lights with LED bulbs to, re to reduce costs. And at the start of the project, the, the main thing that um, was, was required was there was no reliable database and mapping system. So this is um, a system that was built using GeoX3 and XGS6. So to try and uh, correct that problem, to show where all the, the data anomalies and things might be. So this is kind of, um, yeah, this, you can kind of see the, the themes and the, the XJS framework kind of showing through uh, in kind of the user interface and structure. But as I say, you don't have to worry too much about the UI yourself. You can just concentrate on the, the functionality and the data. So this is the, the public lighting system. So it integrates con things like Google Street View and then it has the grid. As I say, the grid is, is one of the key components. Uh, there's another large system called the Pavement Management System for managing all the local and regional roads in, in Ireland. So that started off with GeoX version 1 back in 2010 and XGS version 2. And it's gone through another iteration up to version 2 of GeoX and XGS 4. And we're planning to move it all into the, to the new technologies hopefully this year and, and next year. So that's been in production for about, for about nine years. So, um, the users like it and they're familiar with the kind of uh, the application approach, so we're going to be sticking with the, the same technologies. So this is what um, GeoX2 looks like and XGS4, so you see the, the styling's a bit more old-fashioned, so you can get some nice, nice themes with the new version of, of XGS. But basically there's, there's hundreds of forms and um, layers and lots of things to interrogate to manage, to manage um, roads and roadworks in Ireland. Now there's a, a couple of examples from from Germany. So one is the uh, geoportal for the Federal Office for Radiation Protection. Um, again, um, it's uh, an XJS6 and GeoX3 system. And in this case, the actual um, the code is all on GitHub, so you can see how the application is, is put together. It's also a, a universal app, which um, in Censure speak means that you have one front end for the browser and one front end for, for mobile. So you can have kind of two different views. So um, you can connect to it from, from your mobile phone and you'll see something different than the browser. And this is a, a screenshot of the, of the Geo, Geo portal. So you can actually see that online and, and play around with that system. So it links in things, some of the XJ, XJS components like the charting and the grids, they're all linked together. So once you have your data in, you can, you can quickly analyze and, and work with the data. Uh, another example is Malawi Disaster Management Portal. So again, this, um, if you speak German, there's a presentation on this um, from Foskis. So I've linked to that, so we'll send, send the slides around afterwards. Again, it's online, so you can play around and see what kind of thing you can create with, with XGS and GeoX. And the code's online as well, so you can, you can get an idea of how to, to structure a large application. And there's a screenshot there. Um, again, you can see the, the layer tree, the overview map there. There's some of the GeoX, GeoX components. So if you want to get involved in the project, um, there's a, a user's mailing list, so you can sign up to that. There's also, you can fork the GitHub repository, and as with all the projects, um, there's a requirement for, for testing, reporting bugs, improving documentation, so um, please get in touch. And just to mention some of the ongoing and future development, um, so I've talked about the, the WFS and the OGC filters. So at the moment, and they've, they've just been added in the last week to the, to the master version on GitHub, there's spatial filtering. So you can use a spatial tool to select an area on the map, and it'll filter both the features on the map and the features in the grid. So that's going to be a very powerful way of, um, of kind of querying and, and using your data. Also, we're going to look at the X web components. So this, um, in theory, should allow XJS components to be used in other JavaScript frameworks. So you won't have to go all in to using XJS, you could use Angular or React and still use the, the nice kind of um, user widgets. There's also um, plans to, to move further away from the Accenture e ecosystem by moving things to, to node modules. And we're planning to have some, some more mobile examples. So this is, um, if you're accessing the system on your mobile phone, then you get a, a different view than, than from the browser. So just uh, in summary, so GeoX is alive and well, so it's in its 10th year now, even though it's been rewritten a couple of times. 
Uh, it's a powerful and stable option for, for desktop like GIS applications. So it's been around a long time and it's still being updated and, and supported. And you can try it out on OSGeo Live 13 on the, the latest version of, of OSGeo Live. So thanks for your time. And um, I think we've got uh, a few minutes for questions. And thanks to my co-authors for maintaining and developing the library for the, for the last nine, eight, nine, ten years. So, thank you. So does anyone have any questions? Uh, thank you very much for a very nice uh, presentation. Uh, my question may be very basic, but uh, I'm just curious. Uh, for instance, I have my own project written in React, and I want to introduce mapping features. Uh, so I'm trying to imagine how hard is it to integrate uh, uh, the, your library with a React code? I'm just curious. Um, at the moment, yeah, everything is really based around the XJS framework. So you kind of have to go all in with XJS and GeoX. But with the, um, with the X web components that have come in the latest version of XJS, um, it looks like it could be possible to allow GeoX to work with React. But at the moment, it's, it's not possible to, you'd have to load in all the XJS stuff plus React and have two frameworks, which would probably get quite messy. So. Okay, thanks. So any other questions? <coughs> Okay, well, thanks for your time. And yeah, if you want to discuss this afterwards or get in touch, then um, there's details there. So thank you. <laughs>